it just feels like home. People are amazing, you know, and every it's it, there's there's a magic about here. There's something remarkable about here. There's, the diversity of people is phenomenal. The locals make you feel like sort of family that you know, let's say that you didn't know about. And, and what's your worst day in paradise? It is really part of what I do um, is life coaching so I can use the internet and Skype to do the life coaching and what we've also done is actually done some mini sound sessions over the internet we've actually used Skype to do that and that was really successful that went really well so we want to explore that a bit more really. As manager of the centre uh, I really get a chance to see and and also nurture a lot of talent. We can open our gallery up here to visual artists. We open up the theater to all kinds of local performers as well as you know, nationally known name in music and uh, theater. So we're really using the center not just as a place to, to showcase uh, highest quality arts from across the country, but also using it to nurture the local uh, talent pool. I was shopping around for different career ideas and I came across um, property appraisal um, and found that uh, UBC would do a two-year program online. So I pursued that and that way I can work from home and um, I'm pretty much on my own schedule. I couldn't have done it without uh, you know, an online program. I work for a company called Intertech and they're a, a multinational company. When we got here, one of the absolute prerequisites was I had to be within a couple of hours from an airport and I had to have high-speed internet to my house. Like I use loads of different contact medias, texting backwards and forwards, and then we use Skype, or there's a website for doing whiteboard drawing. We use that quite a lot. I can open up a file pretty much as fast here off of a server um, sitting in another country and they can open it up on the server just over their own internal network. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. We set out to make a, a high quality instrument, one of the same quality as the Boston level of flute making, and to have it accessible to the normal player. That was our mission statement, to make a good, well-playing instrument. And I think we've done that. In terms of the wood that we buy, we found a supplier in South Africa who understands exactly what it is we're looking for. You know, we have conversations over Skype, we send long emails, so we get into a lot of detail. We also use Skype to talk to our customers, and I've done some demonstrations on Skype and exactly how you use the tools and the different waxes and oils that we use to, to take care of the flutes. been playing guitar for uh, 20 years or so and uh, just wanted to build one for myself and it just kind of took off from there. It's relaxing in there. Uh, it's, uh, I spend most of my day out there building. High speed's been a big boom, you know, posting pictures on Facebook and you know, exchanging email and pictures with potential customers and that sort of thing. Yeah, there's some sound samples on the, on the website uh, and uh, video, of course. Well, the Hoppin Brothers, uh, J.B. Cormier, Bill Elliott, Brian Doyle. Uh, I think the last one I numbered was um, 1, 118, I believe. I'm a freelance magazine editor. I worked for Vogue in New York City for about 10 years, and I now do that work from here. I just get stories sent to me here by the staff in New York and I'm able to edit them wherever I am. It's it really almost, it doesn't matter if I'm sitting on, you know, they're on the 12th floor in Times Square. I could be sitting one floor above them and it would really be the same technology. They're just emailing me a text or giving me remote access to photographs so I can look at it all. I can look at the layouts or the clothes or whatever it is and I'm able to edit it. And it, it you know, with the internet, it doesn't really matter where I am. You know, they find it entertaining that I'm up here. It's kind of a novelty. They like it, I think, that somebody escaped in Manhattan. <laughs>
Well, my family had a boat yard in England. That's, I grew up in boats, and despite my parents' best efforts to persuade me to do something else, I was hooked at an early age, and that's all I've ever done. You know, the internet has changed the world. For anyone, you know, it, it, it opens up opportunities. You have this vast market. In my business, um, the boat customers, the people who order boats from me, um, they're not going to be from this local community. I mean, the, the boat we're building now is going to Ontario. Um, the last couple of decades when I was on the West Coast, we were basically building for the U.S. market. We're in South Shore, Nova Scotia here. We're very close to the huge market in New England, so we're well placed from that point of view. We have a website, obviously that's, that's, that's the crucial thing. You know, we've kind of built a presence, and then the website is with, the, with our catalog of stock uh, plans is there for people to, to, to purchase from. From the point of view of the design business, and in particular the sale of stock plans, the internet has changed everything for me. The, the combination of internet and credit card means that we basically have a global market now and it's entirely independent of where we're located. Yeah, I began in the early 70s carving fishermen mostly, local fishermen. Very much interested in portraying local culture and, and the humour and the different sides of lobster fishing and, and fishing in general. Most of my sales tend to be uh, commissioned or custom orders and probably the biggest that, uh, portion of my sales over the internet are portrait figurines. And once I begin the carving I can even show the work in progress, little pictures, it's very easy to, to carry on. So it's even easier I think than someone living within 50 or 100 miles because they, they can just click on the internet and see in a minute what I'm doing. So I use PayPal as the means of paying, uh, ship directly, and I can find a small niche market and, and with thousands of people interested in what I do, or hundreds of thousands. I think you can make a very significant portion of your income just doing things, and you get to do what you love. I love having the studio right in the middle of town. People are coming in and out of the door all the time. Basically, I advertise it mostly through the internet. I've been using Facebook. The whole artistic side of the town is, is on my Facebook profile, so it's definitely easy to get in contact with people. I also do um, music promotion and uh, website design. I'm also offering music promotion packages to musicians so that I'll upload their, um, I'll work with a service to to get their music on um, online stores, iTunes and Amazon MP3, and making sure that they have a MySpace page and they have uh, all of the, the things that, that um, theaters and, and other venues are looking for just to get them on, to have an online presence. I could have gone to Truro to start a studio. I, could, I had a few opportunities of studios in Halifax that I could have gotten a job at, but Shelburne's home. Shelburne's always been home, so uh, I, I love it here and I know a lot of people that can help me uh, to grow and expand my business. We serve the golf maintenance industry and we were lucky enough to uh, get some patents on some of the very specific calculations that we do, so we have a, um, don't have a lot of competition. And with the internet services, we have a report writer in Winnipeg our software technician is also in Winnipeg. Our consultant lives in Chicago. And being able to put large files on the internet at a data exchange site, it's, uh, it's just like they're sitting next door in an office. They actually don't really realize that we're in small town Nova Scotia because everything's done sort of remotely. It's, it's the way people are doing business. Nobody really asks, where, where are you? Where are you out of? So I think the image that they probably have is that we're probably in an office tower in a big urban center, but we're not. 